Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan. Please like, and here you can ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things such as artworks. And you can change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. This video is for revision of chemistry, general chemistry. Uh, it's good for some tests, a GAMSAT, and I guess MCAT, I hope. So, matter, we'll begin with matter. Matter can have three states, and these are known as the states of matter. It, matter can be solid, matter can be liquid, and matter can be gas. A solid matter has a fixed shape and volume. Uh, matter in a liquid state has a fixed volume, but not a fixed shape because, as you know, water moves around. A gas, uh, another form of matter, fits into a container with any size and shape, so it occupies this space, because gas is in air, it moves around, for example. And these are known as the physical properties, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, matter can also be classified, classification of matter. A substance, for example, a substance is a type of matter that has a defined composition and cannot be um, separated um, into other things, such as, for example, water is a substance. Water is always water. Um, NaCl, sodium chloride, or salt, is always salt. It is a substance. Now, an element is the simplest form of a substance. So remember, an element is a simple, simplest form of the substance. So for example, water is a substance, but water consists of hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen and oxygen are the simplest form of a substance. Um, an element is also composed of one type of atom. And we'll talk about atoms soon enough. Next is compound. Now compound consists of two or more elements and, um, and it's also actually a substance. So as we talked about before, um, salt is made out of sodium and chloride, so sodium chloride. And so this is a compound because it's made out of two elements, sodium and chloride. A mixture. Now a mixture is not a pure substance because um, its composition can vary and they are physically mixed, they are not chemically mixed. And now this is pretty hard to understand, but an example of this is air, for example. Air, in air, the air we breathe, we have oxygen gas and nitrogen gas. And so they are, they are not actually chemically mixed because they're not bonded or anything, like sodium chloride. However, they are physically mixed because they are present together. So this is a mixture. A mixture can actually be divided into two categories also. A, a homogeneous mixture, also known as a solution and a heterogeneous, heterogeneous mixture. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, homogeneous, homo, homo means the same, and heterogeneous, hetero means different. So a homogeneous mixture, a solution, a good example of this, for example, is if we have a um, substance of water in a jar, and we add sodium chloride, salt, into it. And this will form a homogeneous mixture. And a homogeneous mixture, in this given example, is a mixture that is uniform in its property throughout um, the given sample. So basically, salt and water are able to physically mix together. Um, a heterogeneous mixture, however, is, for example, if we have the same container of water, but instead of putting salt in there, we put a rock in there. This will form a heterogeneous mixture, which is a mixture that consists of physically distinct parts, each with different properties. So, a rock and water have physically distinct properties. A rock will never mix with water, it will just stay there. Now, let's go back to elements. As we've learned, an element is composed of one type of atom. Now, what is an atom? Now, matter is actually composed of atoms. Everything we see is composed of atoms, and that is why atoms is important. A typical structure of an atom, the center of the atom, also called the nucleus, consists of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged and neutrons are just neutral. Now important thing to know is that usually for every proton which is positively charged we have an electron and an electron is negatively charged. An electron actually surrounds the nucleus um, in a sort of space. 
So electrons occupy the surrounding space. Electrons are very, very, very small compared to the neutrons and the protons. And so an atom is usually uh, electrically neutral because there's as many electrons as there are protons. The size of a typical atom is, is about 10 to the negative 10 meters, which is uh, very, very small. Um, and another important thing to remember is that an element in any type of matter, such as an element in uh, wood, um, each element in that wood is composed of only one type of atom. And that is why atoms are unique. So knowing that each element is composed of one type of atom, how can we define between atoms? So now let's look at the atomic symbol for this. Now atoms, there are always uh, one type of atom for each element. Uh, atomic symbol. Here we have the typical atomic symbol where X is a chemical element symbol. A is the atomic mass, usually roughly uh, if we add the protons and uh, the protons and neutrons together will make up the atomic mass. Z is the atomic number, which is essentially the number of protons. And atoms are usually electrically neutral because for every one proton there is usually one electron. What defines an element is the protons because proton does not change. So the atomic number defines what, uh, what type of element it is. So for example, here we have sodium, which has an atomic mass of 23 and an atomic number of 11. And so sodium always has 11 protons because this is what defines sodium. And remember, remember what I just said, for, um, in an atom, usually for every proton there's an electron. But this can, of, of, of course, change. Because electrons and neutrons numbers can actually increase or decrease. The protons numbers does not increase or decrease. All, the, only the electrons and neutrons can increase or decrease. And when um, the number of neutrons decreases or increases, this is where we have isotopes of a particular element. So an isotope is where atoms, where the atomic number is the same, the number of protons is the same, but different number of neutrons. And so this also changes the mass of the whole atom. So a good example of this is hydrogen. Now, hydrogen 1 is the most occurring hydrogen we have in, on Earth. So we have H1, the atomic mass is 1, and the atomic number is 1. So what this means is that we only have one proton and one electron. There are no neutrons. However, we can also have hydrogen with the atomic mass of 2 and the atomic number of 1. So this would mean that there is still one proton, but there is one neutron and still one electron. There's also another type of hydrogen where the atomic mass is 3 and the atomic number is 1 still. So this would mean that there is still one proton, because proton defines a hydrogen, and we have two neutrons. And these are all isotopes of each other, because they consist of different numbers of neutrons, as you can see. And because they consist of different number of neutrons, the mass of the whole atom would change. Another example of isotopes is a three occurring uh, neon isotopes with the atomic number of 10. We can have a neon with the atomic mass of 20, we can have a neon with the atomic mass of 21, and we can have a neon with the atomic mass of 22. A neon with the atomic mass of 20 means that there's 10 protons, because 10 protons is, is what defines the element neon, and we have 10 neutrons. And because we have 10 protons, we have 10 electrons. A neon with the atomic mass of 21 means that we still have 10 protons, but we have 11 neutrons, and we still have 10 electrons. A neon with the atomic mass of 22 means that we still have 10 protons, because that's what defines neon, element neon but we have the uh, 12 neutrons, and we still have 10 electrons. Now, look at, now let's look at some other isotopes. Carbon has three types of isotopes. There's carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12 has essentially six neutrons. Carbon-13 has seven neutrons, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. Now, the number above above this carbon the mass number is not a good indication of the weight because that's just assuming the number of protons and neutrons 
that particular isotope has. So if we look at chloride, which is number 17, its, atom, uh, its mass number is 34, but its actual mass is 35.5. So, which is which comes from 17 neutrons, 17 protons, and 17 electrons. But where does this 1.5 come from? Okay, well, if we use carbon 12's isotope as a basis to measure the atomic mass of any element, we can see where this weight of each element comes from. Now, the mass of um, an atom, we use the atom mass unit scale, abbreviated AMU or U. And remember, we use carbon 12 as the basis to measure um, the mass of any given element. So what I mean by this is, for example, one atomic mass unit, 1U, is equal to 1.660054 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, which is very small. Or alternatively, one atomic mass unit also equals 1 12th the, ma the mass of carbon. So if we're looking at one full atom of carbon, this will mean that the atomic mass unit is 12. But since carbon um, exists in a number of isotopes, that is why um, the actual mass of carbon is 12.011 atomic mass units. And so we can, uh, we can write this as carbon 12. Oxygen has atomic mass unit of 16, so we got oxygen 16. And chloride has the atomic mass um, of 35.45. Now carbon, carbon-12 also defines a mole. Now a mole is a very, is a very complex um, subject, I know, uh, but essentially we can say that one mole equals Avogad Avogadro's number, which is just a number. So one mole equals Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of anything, in this case molecules. A mole defines a number. It's basically the same as saying half a dozen eggs equals six eggs. A mole of paper equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23 papers. But we'll get back into moles later on. But for now, let's look and learn about the periodic table, uh, which is part two of this chemistry revision video. And also we'll look about on electrons, the shells, orbitals, and configuration. So that's next. Uh, thanks for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe. Thank you.